Hey, what's up, Mike? Let's take a look at why this tornado works. Uh, of course, we born a thousand particles. Those get thrown at the origin, and this next rule actually moves them into place. What happens is the, the all particles, uh, their age goes into value A, lifespan goes into value B, and then this add multiply says A divided by B, so age divided by lifespan. And we're just going to go ahead and if you can decipher the chicken scratching, age divided by lifespan. Well, when the particle's born, he's zero, and his lifespan is actually assigned at birth. That's going to be 101. So what happens is, as these particles at zero, they're all age zero. And then as they age over time, you know, their age is going to go up every frame. Uh, so what happens is, is we're going to start off with a value of zero, but then as they get older, toward, say, frame 100 over 101, what's going to happen is this value is going to approach 1. So what's happening is this add multiply is just going to output a value between 0 and 1 over time, over the particle's lifespan, basically. Okay, so that's that part. And then we've got each particle generating a random value between 1 and 50. Uh, each particle gets his own unique random value, but he only gets a random value once during the entire animation. Okay, so it's going to value is going to be one, somewhere between one and fifty, and this is going to be fed into another add multiply. It's going to take the zero to one coming out of this one, put it into the value a. So we're going to put that. That's going to be a ramped up value over time, and then he's going to be getting a value somewhere between one and fifty. So it's one fifty. Okay. So what's going to happen? Uh, this value now here is going to output uh, something over time as well. It's going to start off at 0 and somewhere between 1 and 50. So that's essentially going to be 0. And then, But over time, it's going to approach you know, 1 over somewhere between 1 and 50. One over, let's take a look at the two different cases. We could have uh, 1 over 1, or you could have 1 over 50. So you could have a big number or a small number. So basically what's going to happen is uh, it's going to go, f this value here is going to output 0 toward uh, either 1 or you know, 1 -fifth or one fiftieth. And so that's what's being fed into this position. Uh, this p path position takes this path, um, it's set to relative, so it's going to be looking for a, va a value somewhere between 0 and 1 that value is being uh, determined by this position. So the position being fed in is going to be anywhere from 0 at the beginning toward either 1 or 1 50th. So if it's 1, it's going to be way down here, because this is the start of the path up here. This is the 0 index. So the path position now gets fed out into the orbit position. So all these particles are being told, hey, I want you to orbit around some position. And the position is changing over time. It's going from here all the way down toward here. And let's take a look. Uh, there's some variation. That's OK. Um, so the path position is changing. So all these particles are changing the position around which they orbit over time. And the reason that some of them get all the way down here and some don't has to do with their random value. So the ones who have a value closer to 1, and let's go back to our model. Remember, if their value is closer to 1, then they're going to approach the position of 1, which would be down here at the end. Well, uh, whereas the, the ones who are stuck with the, the high number, high random number of 50, generate a small 1 over 50. And so they are going to end up somewhere along in here, this range. Um, the distance here actually determines how far away from that position are they orbiting. So this is nice, very elegant little solution that says, okay, well, the ones who have a low number of 1 actually end up reaching down over time, whereas the ones who have a distance of 50, where their, di their orbit distance is 50, uh, they also don't really move down the path very much. Remember, their path position does not... Uh, evaluate very far. It only goes from 0 to 1 50th. So that's why these guys up here don't really end up moving too far, uh, but these ones 
here in the middle do. And that's interesting to note also if you go ahead and just create a spline here roughly at the origin and measure that distance out and we notice down down here you can see that it's oh it's just about it looks like I probably should pick a little closer. So yeah it's right around fifty distance, the length of that spline. So yeah, and you'll notice a good way to kind of diagnose these good edit on the fly is turned off so we get real time updates. Uh, we can change this just scrub that around and now we'll see that uh, the value of 1 to 16 we're gonna go from 0 to 1 over 16 and 1 over 16 isn't too bad it's actually gonna end up coming down the spline quite a bit over his lifespan so it's really all driven by this 0 to 1 with lifespan uh, but then that's being further modified with the you know 0 to either 1 or 0 to 1 50th to control the path position right there so that's about it.